Hey everyone, Azim here. We are in the chapter four notes, starting on slide 14. Uh, so this is the second video in this chapter. Where we just talked about the different uh, characteristics of epithelia and also what the basic tissue types are. But referring to epithelium, we talked about some basic characteristics. Here we're talking about the different types of epithelium. Uh, the way that we categorize these different types of epithelium have to do with the shape of the cell that you find in this type of epithelium and how many layers there are. Cell shape and layers. Here's our first example, first type. Simple squamous epithelium. Simple is referring to the fact that there's only one layer of cells. Squamous, it's a long A, squamous is referring to the fact that these cells are flat. When I say that they're flat, think of like a pancake or a coin. When you look at a pancake or a coin from one view, it looks nice and round, but from the side view, it looks flat. That's what it's shaped like. So you've got a single layer of these cells. Uh, here in this cross-sectional view, you can see the cells. This should be a cross-section. Um, down here, You can see individual cells lining this space. Can you see the nucleus? Very, it's a little faint, but here's a nucleus, cell, nucleus, cell. So these cells are in longitudinal section. It's the long ways. Why do we need cells that are a single layer and thin and flat? By being thin and flat in, in some areas where we need it, this allows for fast absorption, fast passage of things going through that cell layer. If, I want, if I'm a molecule and I need to get through the cell really quickly, if the cell is thinner, it'll go through faster if it's thinner. Um, so that's why we see this in blood vessels because we want things to go through the blood vessel layer, the walls of the blood vessel, to go from the plasma to the interstitial fluid faster. Uh, you know what, let me draw that. If these are the cells lining a blood vessel, in here would be plasma, out here would be interstitial fluid, and then maybe over here, We've got some cells. If you want a molecule of something, say oxygen, to pass into the interstitial fluid and then pass into your cells, if you want that to happen fast, you want the cells to be thin. So these are simple squamous cells lining blood vessels. Same is true for our lungs. The air sacs of our lung, the microscopic air sacs of our lung are called alveoli. I'll show you histology of that coming up. Um, simple squamous. Uh, picture it over here. Is something called a Bowman's capsule. You can see a nucleus thin cell, nucleus thin cell. Nucleus, thin cell. These are simple squamous epithelial cells lining this very thin lumen, that white space that you see is a lumen. They're for filtration in the kidney. Their kidney is for filtering stuff from the blood vessels. Uh, from blood vessels, this is allowing stuff to be filtered. So that's one major reason why you'd find simple squamous epithelium in a given tissue. And you can see you can find it in many different parts of the body, blood vessels, lungs, kidneys, for fast diffusion. Another reason you might see simple squamous epithelium is in areas where you need uh, some kind of, where you have a lubricating fluid and then you have these cells that are just kind of providing a border. So they're a border for where you have lubricating fluid in linings of your body cavities. Remember serous membranes? 
Serous membranes have simple squamous epithelium. Uh, also the lining of your heart chambers together with fluid inside that helps reduce friction. But mainly in terms of structure function relationships, the easiest way to think of this is that by being thin and flat, you get fast diffusion of molecules through the layer. It's only one layer, it's a thin cell. <clears throat> Simple meant one layer. Stratified means many layers. The word strata or stratum, whoops. Strata means layers. Stratum means layer. So stratified means layered epithelium. Stratified squamous means layers of flat cells. Layers of flat cells. Since you have many layers, and there's generally at least like three to five or more than that, more than that, there's several layers in one way we see stratified squamous. Um, the superficial layer is dead. So this layer that you see here is all dead. They're far away from the basal side. They're far away from blood vessels. So it's very hard for oxygen and nutrients to get to them. And there's other reasons why they might die, but that's a major reason. Blood vessels, let me back up. This is the epithelium. This is connective tissue. Blood vessels are found in connective tissue, but they're not found in epithelium. So if you want nutrients to get, you can, nutrients can easily get to the basal layer, but not to the most superficial layer. So the superficial layer is dead cells. By having stratified, uh, by having stratified squamous epithelium, by having the superficial layer be uh, full of dead cells, these are expendable and they allow for protection in high friction areas for your skin, for your oral cavity, esophagus, anus, vagina, uh, urethra. These are all near openings. Now there are actually two types of stratified squamous. And they're based on what kind of special protein they either do produce or do not produce. There is a special protein called keratin. You may have heard of it. It's in a lot of beauty products, skin care products. Keratin is a protein that is very tough. It's good for reinforcing and it's waterproof. This is great for places like your skin where you need a very tough protein since you're dealing with lots of external forces and something that's pretty waterproof. I can pour water on my skin and it's gonna beat off. I know if you sit in a bathtub for a long time, your skin gets weird, that's, we can get to that later or something that you actually talk about in physiology, but on the whole, your skin is waterproof. And that's a good thing because you don't want to dehydrate your skin so easily. Some of your epithelial tissue has this protein called keratin in the cells. Keratin, and if you take a look at this cell right here, what's highlighted in green is the keratin. It's part of the cytoskeleton, I should say that. Part of the cytoskeleton. It's part of the cytoskeleton. So it's providing reinforcing for the cell. Some epithelial cells have keratin, some don't, or most don't, I should say. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is only found in your skin. The fancy word for your skin is cutaneous membrane. We'll, or, well, we'll get to that later in the next chapter, but it's only found in your skin. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It's a lot of words. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. The way that it appears when you look at the histology, the top layer is very flaky and dead. I mean, the other layer is also dead. Like this is also dead, but it's not as flaky. But with keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, the top layer is very dead, very flaky. The deepest layer down here, it's not that flat actually.
almost cube shaped. Is that as in these cells, as you progress more superficially, it gets flatter. That's keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. You find it in skin and nowhere else. The only place where you find keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is in your skin, the outer covering of your body. Now the inner covering of your body, your tracts, where it's closer to an entry or an exit of your body. So your mouth, oral cavity, your esophagus, anus, vagina, urethra, places like that. It's inside your body, but not really. It's, you can trace it from your skin to the inside of your mouth or wherever. This is non-keratinized, so it's not reinforced. It's not waterproofed. It's more delicate. You know that your outside of your cheek, superficial here, is tougher than the inside of your cheek. It's, you can easily cut it. Um, say you're feeding a sharp chip or something. It's not as flaky. You don't see that flakiness here but you still have flat cells. And as you go deeper, the basal side, they're still larger. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It's more delicate, not waterproof. You find it in the entry exit points of your mucous membranes, oral cavity, esophagus, vagina, urethra, anus, places like that. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium you only find in skin. Next type, <clears throat> simple cuboidal. So there's that simple again, it's one layer. Cuboidal, it's cube shaped, it's a larger cell. When you have a smaller cell, there's less, there's fewer organelles in there, right? Smaller space, fewer organelles. Larger cell, more organelles. There is more room for production of stuff. There is, you can secrete stuff. We can secrete proteins, we can secrete other things by exocytosis or by some other means of secretion, which we'll get to later. But there's more machinery, there's more organelles for more production of stuff, proteins and other things. At the same time, by being simple, you can still be thin enough for absorbing stuff. So Simple squamous is the most efficient for absorption. Simple cuboidal, not as efficient, but still fine. You can still absorb things. So you get both high rates of secretion and high rates relatively of absorption. You get a single layer of cuboidal cells. So where do you find these cells? You find these cells in, in many glands. We'll be talking about endocrine and exocrine glands. We'll get to what that means later. But if you've heard of the thyroid gland, for instance, sits on top of the trachea, your salivary glands secrete saliva into your oral cavity. Those are examples of where you can find simple cuboidal cells. That's what we see over here. You can also find another example of where you can find cuboidal cells is in the kidney. The kidney, we saw simple squamous for filtration, but there's also some simple cuboidal cells for absorption and secretion. Your kidneys do a lot more than just filter. There's more processes that happen there. And so the secretion and absorption of things that to form your, eventually form your urine takes place there in your kidney. You have simple cuboidal cells. We had simple squamous and stratified squamous, non-keratinized and keratinized. We have simple cuboidal and we also have stratified cuboidal. Stratified cuboidal is providing more protection and allows for some secretion because you've got a bigger cell can produce and release stuff. We generally see this in ducts. The word duct, maybe you know ducts like in a building or for carrying air, for instance, those are air ducts that you can circulate hot air through your house, for instance. But a duct in a gland is a way to release fluids, release secretions from your gland into a lumen. I'll write that out. From gland to larger lumen. For instance, if you have a salivary gland, you've got your gland, 
you release into a duct and the duct leads out to your oral cavity. The oral cavity is the lumen in this example. Um, when you see stratified cuboidal, so this is actual histology, what I'm coloring here in green, that's the lumen. Small circle, we've cut this tube, this duct and cross section. You've got two to three layers of cells. When we saw stratified squamous, there's many layers, like five plus. Here there's two to three and it's shaped in a tight circle. It's always gonna be like that. So whenever you see stratified cuboidal, it will always be in this tighter circle. Relatively not too big of a lumen, but you can see the lumen, not too big, but it's there. And then two to three layers deep of cuboidal cells forming a duct. If we could see outside of this, we would see just more regular cuboidal cells producing secretions and those secretions get released into the duct. That's stratified cuboidal. Simple columnar, here's our third shape. Simple means one layer. Columnar means they're taller. So what's the difference between a tall cell and a cuboidal cell? One's got more height. Because they're both one layer and because they're both bigger than squamous, they're both good at secretion and absorption. We just saw this previously for simple cuboidal. So in that sense, these two cell types, these two epithelium types are very, very similar. You do find these in completely, well, not completely different, but in different places. One good example of where you can find simple columnar epithelium is in other parts of your digestive tract, your stomach and your intestines, both small and large. Uh, that's what this is pictured over here on the right, both in an illustration and then in the actual histology. The shape of a single cell is like that. That's one cell. You can see the, uh, there are some structures on the apical side. Those structures are called microvilli. You find microvilli in some places. For instance, you don't find it in the stomach, you do find it in the intestines. Um, and that's to maximize, as we mentioned before, to maximize surface area. So you get maximal secretion and absorption. Single layer, you still get uh, transfer of stuff across that cell layer. Uh, and by being big, you can still produce stuff bigger than squamous. Another place where you can find simple columnar epithelium, <clears throat> excuse me, is in the uterine tube. In the uterine tube, again, you see these tall rectangular cells um, lining a lumen. These happen to have another apical structure. So this is the apical side. And you have cilia here. Cilia are different, they have microtubules. And because they have those microtubules, they can move. They're for sweeping. Um, we'll, we'll get to the trachea in a minute, but the trachea also has cilia, but they have a different epithelium type. Simple columnar epithelium, tall cells, just like cuboidal, you, you can have high rates of secretion and absorption. And we often see some unique apical structure like microvilli in the intestines and cilia in the uterine tube. The stomach, they do have simple columnar. They do not have those specialized apical structures. There is a stratified columnar type. So we've had simple squamous, stratified squamous, simple columnar, stratified columnar, simple cuboidal, stratified cu cuboidal. Um, so following that trend, we do have stratified columnar. Stratified means layered, columnar, they're tall. So they're protecting the high rates of secretion. They are much like the stratified cuboidal. We saw stratified cuboidal in ducts. Some ducts, we see that here. And then we also see it in some parts of the pharynx, some parts of the anus, urethra, and ductus deferens. I say some parts because when you look at a tissue under the microscope, 
I, I'm overgeneralizing here. I'm saying that this one organ is always this epithelium. That's not always the case. Sometimes it's a mix. Sometimes in some parts you get this type and then another part, there's a little bit of this. It, that's just how it is. It's not always like, it's not black and white. There are some different types of epithelium within a given tissue. Like the pharynx, for instance, is mostly non-keratinized stratified squamous, but parts of it are stratified columnar. Um, the ones that I'm going to show you are mostly in ducts. The ductus deferens, if you're unfamiliar, is part of the male reproductive system. It is a duct for releasing semen out of the penis for ejaculation. Uh, when you look at a duct like that, and even a salivary gland duct like that, sometimes you see that they're columnar. And there's two to three layers, just like what we saw before. Um, and they provide some protection as stuff gets released out of the duct. You don't want that duct to collapse too much. This is a rarer type. You don't see this as much. <clears throat> we had simple columnar, stratified columnar. This one is weird. This one is pseudo stratified columnar. Pseudo, this stem means fake or false. So it's fake stratified. It looks like it's stratified, but it's not actually stratified. How does that make any sense? If we take a look at the histology here, this actual histology here on the bottom right, I'm going to trace, there's one cell and here's its nucleus. There's another cell and here's its nucleus. Here's another cell, here's its nucleus. Here's another cell, here's its nucleus. Do you see how the nuclei are at different levels? They're not all in a row. Because the nuclei are at different levels, because they're not all in a row, it looks like there's more than one layer of cells, but that's not actually the case. They're just really smushed together. They appear as one layered. I mean, they appear as many layers, but it's really only one layer. Let me show you the previous slide. Do you see how neatly in a row all these nuclei are? All right next to each other in a nice row. That's not the case for pseudostratified columnar. One's up here, one's down here, one's over here. The cells are so smushed together that the nuclei get into different places. You really packing a high number of cells. One good example of where you can find pseudostratified columnar epithelium is in your respiratory tract. I mentioned the trachea earlier. The trachea has pseudostratified columnar epithelium with cilia. So a single cell, tall, skinny, and then another single cell with a nucleus off somewhere else, tall, skinny, and then another one, tall, skinny, cilia on the apical side to help sweet mucus. You can also find this in, in some specific parts of the reproductive tract. Uh, there's that ductus deferens again. So ductus deferens, you can have stratified cuboidal, excuse me, stratified columnar. You can also have pseudostratified columnar. Um, epididymis is a male reproductive gland. We'll get to that later. The endometrium is uh, the lining of the uterus in the female reproductive system. Those also have pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And one more time, because they're one layer, you can absorb. Because they're tall, because they're columnar, you can also secrete stuff. There's more room for production. Our last epithelium type, before we start looking at some videos of histology, let's show you what it would look like. Uh, we have uh, transitional epithelium. This is our last type. I believe this is number nine, if I'm counting correctly. Transitional epithelium is very unique. It is layered. Um, it is layered much like stratified squamous. There's many layers. With stratified cuboidal and columnar, there's maybe two to three layers and it was always in a tighter circle, a duct. With, with stratified squamous and transitional epithelium, there's many layers. You can see here like one, two, three, four, five, six-ish or more. There's many layers and a large lumen. 
The difference is these layers are not organized neatly. Rather than having all the cells in a nice row, let me show you that back on slide 16. Even if there's some waviness here, they're still organized in a nice row. You can see in this layer when we go higher up, look at how even, evenly these cells are layered. That's stratified squamous, but with transitional, it's really hard to follow a single thing because it's all over the place. Added to that, you have odd shaped cells. Some are columnar, some are squamous, some are cuboidal. There's no real order to it. It's a whole hodgepodge of things going on here in transitional epithelium. Why do we have that? What's the benefit here? By having this irregular arrangement of cells and layers and different cell types, it can compress really nicely. It can stretch. I'm going to erase this. Here you can see a relaxed urinary bladder. And then here's a stretched urinary bladder full of urine. When urine presses down, urine in the lumen presses down, there is some compressibility in this epithelium. We find transitional epithelium all throughout the urinary tract, and it's really the only place we find it. So it's very specialized in that sense. Urinary bladder, renal pelvis is part of the kidney. Ureters are the tubes that exit from the kidney to the urinary bladder. These are places where we find transitional epithelium. You can, you can stretch more to allow for more urine output. If you go to our website, our Canvas site, uh, I've clicked on, I'll show you how I got here. Um, click on start here. There are two ways you can get to our videos and you could actually just go to, the, to my YouTube page. But if you're following along here, you could go to the welcome get started here videos link. And if you scroll down, you can search by topic. Um, so we are in tissue types, epithelial and connective tissues. You could also find this under, um, we're in week two. You can also find this under week two module and scroll down to lab videos. And there it is, tissue types and epithelial and connective tissues. So it should get you to this. See videos, tissue types, epithelial and connective tissues. I'm going to click on epithelium histology. You could watch it in this screen right here, or you could open it up in a different window. Um, I've linked in the comments the different places where you can find the different epithelium types. Let's take a quick look at each of these types. Shown here <clears throat> is 40X of the lung. Now it's 100X. What you'll notice is that there are these air sacs. These air sacs are called alveoli. Alveoli. Now you'll notice that these air sacs are very thin. Let's go to 400X. At 400X in the lung, I'll point to a single cell. You can see a nucleus right there, see that dark spot? And look how thin this cell is. That's a, that's a simple squamous cell. cut longitudinally. That's a simple squamous cell in the lung. We skip to 
135. This is 40X of the kidney. There's a lot going on here. You see these round shapes, like this big round shape here. This is called the Bowman's capsule. We're gonna go closer into that. This is 400X in the kidney. We actually see two different epithelium types here. One epithelium type, if you look, for instance, here, see a nucleus and then a thin, flat cell. Nucleus, thin, flat cell. These cells that wrap all the way around and face this white space, that white space is a lumen. Those are simple squamous epithelia. These are simple squamous epithelia of the Bowman's capsule. They allow for filtrate to come in from blood vessels. But what we can also see here, pretty much everywhere else surrounding it, like, Actually, here's a better example with a larger lumen right here. Look at all these cells wrapping around in a circle like that. These cells are a bit bigger. These are simple cuboidal. And there's many examples of that. There's all these tubes here, all made of simple cuboidal cells. At 257, this is 100X. You can see the epithelium up here. It's darker, it's facing outside or lumen. You can see the layers here, so we know this is stratified. This is, this is 400X in the esophagus. So the lumen is out here. You can see dead flat cells over here. You can see larger cube shaped cells here. The dead flat cells on top, they're, they can be flaky, but the flakiness is an extreme here. And we can see that there's some lots of cells that are still pretty flat. All of this is non-keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. This is non-keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. Lots of layers, larger cells on the, on the basal side, they get flatter as you go superficially. Compare that with what we see here. This is 40X. This is all the epithelium right here. I know it's stained a little differently from the bottom to the top. You can see that there's many layers. This is, should be 400X right now. Oops, okay. It's 400X, we're in thick skin. Thick skin is like the skin, the skin of your palms or the skin of your palmar region, plantar region, the bottoms of your feet, that's thick skin. All of this, these are all dead, flat cells. They're so compressed together, you can't make out one cell from another. They're all just a bunch of dead, flat cells on top. That's like, you know, your calluses, just lots of dead, flat cells. Even if you don't have calluses, you still have lots of dead, flat cells. Deeper to that, you can still see cells that are relatively flat and in a nice layer. You can see that they're all a nice layer here. Let's go down though.
So those dead flat cells are here. And a little bit flaky too. I'll put flaky here as an adjective. Here's our basal layer of cells, cube shaped. This is keratinized, K-E-R-A-T-I-N-I-Z-E-D, keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. You find this in skin and nowhere else. Could also thin skin, skin elsewhere that aren't your palms or your soles or your feet. You still have keratinized. It's just the dead flat, flat flaky layer won't be as thick. <clears throat> Here we are looking at one of our salivary glands. That was four. That was forty x. This is one hundred. It's going quick now. Here is four hundred x. So the purpose of the salivary gland is to produce saliva, which is important for digestion for many reasons. And in a salivary gland, we have cuboidal cells. Glands means we have simple cuboidal cells. You can see these simple cuboidal cells arranged in tight circles. So let me trace over one, like this one right here. These cells are a bit lighter colored. They're called uh, mucus cells, we'll get to that in another video. But do you see how they're arranged in a circle with a tight lumen? And they're all just forming around that. These are simple cuboidal cells. These lighter, the lighter ones are called mucus cells. You can find darker ones as well. These are called serous cells. We'll get to secretions later, but that's what they're called. They're both cuboidal shaped. They're both simple cuboidal, a single layer of cuboidal cells in, a, in this case in a tight circle. In this same gland, remember glands can also have ducts. Certain glands can have ducts. And that's what we see right here. Same gland that we were just looking at. And right here, we see a larger than normal circular arrangement of cells. And you can see, if you look closely, that there's two layers of cuboidal cells. This is stratified cuboidal. We're looking at a salivary gland duct. We're looking at a duct, a passageway that leads to a lumen. Here we're looking at the intestines. That was 40x. Here is 100x. You can see that there's some kind of texture here on the apical side of the intestines. And this is all epithelium. All of this here is epithelium. So we go to 400x. Let's actually go back a little bit. So the lumen is out this way. Food and other stuff would be out here. If we go a little bit deeper, we'll notice that these darker cells, they end. So this is epithelium. And this farther down is connective tissue. <clears throat> when we look specifically at the epithelium, and once again, this is 400X, so a place in the small intestines. We can see these cells 
right here form a tight packed grouping of columnar cells. This is simple columnar, simple columnar epithelium. The reason why there's white space in here, it's not because it's like a tube, like what we saw in the salivary gland. These things actually extend to the surface, it's just that when you cut them at an angle, you're gonna get funny shapes like this. The, the parts that come up like that, these large structures are called villi. And then on a single cell, on a single ones of these columnar cells, we've got microvilli on the apical side. You can't really see them here. They're, you need a better microscope to really make them out. So it just looks kind of fuzzy. Just kind of looks fuzzy on the apical side. Those are microvilli. We find these in the simple cuboidal, simple columnar cells of the intestines. This is 100x of uh, the ductus deferens. Let's go to 400x. It's a duct, a special duct found in the male reproductive system. I said that in the ductus deferens, some parts we have pseudostratified columnar. In some parts, it's hard to make out, I know, but there's more than one layer of tall cells. It's a stratified columnar. Stratified columnar. In some places though, it looks only like one layer. So this is, in that area, it's probably pseudostratified columnar, but in areas where it looks thicker, that's stratified columnar. To find pseudostratified columnar, where it's only, only pseudostratified columnar, we can look in the trachea. Let me back up a little bit. A little bit more. All right, so here is 100X. The lumen is right here. And you can see epithelium right here. This, these darker cells facing the lumen, that's epithelium. Let's go to 400X. Focus, there we go. 400X in the trachea. The lumen is over here. This is the epithelium. Look at the nuclei. There's one nucleus down here, another one up here, another here, here. They're all kind of all over the place. So it looks like it has many layers, but really it's just really thin cells smushed together. This is pseudo, S P S E U D O stratified columnar, pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. You can find this in places like the trachea. These also happen to have cilia. If you look closely, see those little, Extensions at the apical side, these are cilia. It helps to know where you are to know what kind of structures you're looking at. How do you know if it's cilia or microvilli? With our compound light microscopes, you can't really tell the difference. You just know because we know we're seeing pseudostratified columnar epithelium. With some apical structures, we must be in the trachea. There's other clues here, like the cartilage, which we'll get to later. Um, knowing that context helps you figure out what it is you're looking at. And of course that takes practice. So just remember as we're going through all these and feel a little lost, don't fret, we will get practice. There's one more epithelium type. 
and that is transitional. It looks a lot like stratified squamous. This is 40x. You can see uh, the lumen is over here. The epithelium is the darker stuff facing the lumen. Let's get closer though. Here's 400x. Let's move to a different part. We are in the urinary bladder. So the lumen is out here. This is the epithelium. Look at how disorganized the epithelium is. Some cells are flat, some are bigger, and there's no real nice layering that we saw in stratified squamous. This is transitional epithelium. It allows for stretching in the urinary tract. So we've gone over simple squamous, non-keratinized stratified squamous, keratinized stratified squamous, simple cuboidal, stratified cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified columnar, pseudostratified columnar, and transitional epithelia. There are nine types of epithelium that you are responsible for knowing. And as far as I know, the only nine types that exist. Um, they all have unique shapes and all of those shapes lead to specific functions in their respective organs. I hope this was helpful. We'll of course talk about it more in class. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, leave questions in the discussion. Rewatch us if you need to. Uh, hope this helps. See you in the next video where we talk more about specialized epithelium, including glands.